and we're here from You Teach, and I hope you guys are super excited for this lesson because we know we are. So first off, I'm going to get you guys asking some questions about what I have projected on the screen. So if you guys could look, what do you see here? Bones. Yeah, it's some bones. What do you notice about it? What part of the body are these bones from? It looks like a head. It looks like a head. So do you know what the bones of the head is called? Um, I think it's a skull. Yeah, a skull. That's right. So we're looking at a skull right now. Do you think this is a human or do you think it's an animal? That's not human. Yeah, it's not human. Do, have you ever seen a person with teeth that big? Nope. Yeah, me neither. So what do you think this is? I don't know. Some sort of fever or something? Yeah, so we're actually looking at a beaver skull. So how could you tell that it was a beaver? What was the big giveaway? The big teeth. It was the big teeth and those big yellow teeth right there. Um, what do you think that the beaver uses its teeth for? To eat? Yeah, it could use it to eat. What else? Um, don't they do something with the wood? Yeah, they do stuff with wood. They cut it down. So they cut the wood down so that they could build a dam, which we'll go over in a second. Beavers are actually vegetarian, so they only eat plants and other non-living things. So, has anyone ever seen a beaver in real life? No. No? No one's seen a beaver? Well, here is a projected image of the beaver that we're going to put up under the screen. Now raise your hand if you've actually seen a beaver before. Do, you have, do any of you recognize this from TV or something? A couple of you? Yeah, so what does the beaver look like? Um, it's furry. It's furry? Yeah, you can see all that fur there. What color is the fur? Brown. It's brown. What about in the back of the beaver? Uh, it looks like it has a big tail. Yeah, it has a really big tail. And that's something unique to beavers. And so I mentioned it earlier, but does anyone know where the beavers live? Do in they the live? water. Yeah, they live in the water. And does anyone remember the term from our bird feet lesson about what it means to live in the water? Uh, beavers are what kind of animals? Aquatic. Aquatic, yeah. So beavers are aquatic animals. They live in rivers and they build their homes. But this will lead us into our question of the day which is how can beavers affect their environment and the other animals around them? So today, what we're going to do is we're going to be working on this really cool lesson um, where we're going to sort of act like beavers. So what beavers do is when there's a fast flowing river or something, beavers create some, something called a dam in the middle of the river, which creates a pond. Um, which a pond is something where the water isn't moving, it's not flowing, so, what basically what beavers do is they stop the flow of water in the river. Um, in the middle of the pond, we have the beaver's home, which is called the beaver lodge. Can everyone say the word lodge, please? Lodge. Cool. That's very good. Um, the entrance to this lodge is underwater so that it protects the beavers from predators. And predators are, are the other animals that are trying to eat the beavers. Um, and so today, for this activity, what I want you guys to do is I want you to pretend that we live in this really cool city, let's call it Beaver Town, and that there's a fast flowing river, the Red River, flowing across the town. So, so for the sake of our, our experiment, let's pretend that our Red River flooded and it's caused so much destruction in the homes, in the homes around it and uh, the entire town. And so today what we're going to do is we're going to create our own dance. So first, here let me put up a, a picture of a beaver constructing a dam. So remember like I said that in the middle of the, of the dam is a beaver lodge and that's where the beaver lives. So today, um, Miss Kelly, Kelly and I are going to be the mayors of our town called Beaver Town and we're going to engage in a little competition. I want you guys to create a dam that will save our town from flooding because this river, the Red River has flooded and it's caused so much destruction and so we need, we need a dam to save it because we don't want it to keep flooding and we don't, um, we don't want it to cause any more, any more chaos. So I'm going to pass out some materials but first let's go over the rules. Remember, 
to be to think like scientists, always be curious. But remember, don't put anything in your mouth. Don't throw it around the room. Make sure that you're listening for when I give you the um, the hook em sign. And always be respectful to your peers. You guys are going to be working in partners. So, um, Ms. Kelly and I are going to pass out job cards. Cool. So now that you have your job cards, I want you to read it to the person next to you. Um, there's going to be a materials manager and a communications manager. And then I want the materials manager to come up here and pick up their materials for the future. So in your materials, you've received some rocks, some leaves, some sticks, and some clay. What this is going to do is you're going to you're going to pretend that you have all the same all of the same um, resources that beavers have. So beavers use trees; they cut down trees, and that's going to be their their sticks. And then they use mud, like the way we use clay to help things, things stick together. And they're going to use rocks for support, and the leaves are just going to create more surface area. Um, go ahead. Uh, so now, I want you guys to take this time, take the next few minutes, to actually create your dams. And then we'll regroup at the end so that we can see who, which group has the best dam. And make sure that you're building your dam in the little plastic cup that we give you, the gutter, so that we could test it. We're going to actually pour water in it into um, your dam and see if it holds the water back. So go ahead and take a couple of minutes to start doing that with your partner. Whenever you guys finish building your dams and you finish testing them, I want you guys to remember that you're scientists, and scientists always write things down. So Ms. Kelly and I have passed out these worksheets so that you can draw a picture of your dam. And then I want you to label all the different parts. Okay, so this is what the flow of the water looks without the dam. And this is why we're going to need a dam. As you can see, there's nothing stopping the water, which is why our, the flood happened in our town. So the dams are going to be built to stop, uh, to either stop the water completely or just slow it down enough. All right, so now that you have your materials and you know your roles, why don't you guys start taking your materials out of the bag? But first, hold up one of the popsicle sticks. What are these like? They're sticks. Yeah, they're sticks, just like the beavers use from their trees. So why doesn't everyone hold up a leaf now? What do you think the beavers use the leaves for? Leaf stuff? Yeah, maybe just to fill in a couple of gaps and holes. Why don't you hold up the clay? So what is this like? Mud. Yeah, it's like the mud. So it's kind of like the glue. It keeps everything together. So lastly, why don't you hold up a rock? Yeah, so what do you think the beavers use the rocks for? Strength. Yeah, for strength, kind of just keeping everything back together. So why don't you and your partner talk about how you're going to start your dam? And we'll walk around helping out all the other groups. So right here, what do you think you're going to start with first? Um, I think I'm going to do a layer of mud first. Why do you think that you're going to do that? Because it's like when you're putting cement and you need it to stay together, you can't just like go in there and put the cement, you know, you need, you need to layer it. Oh yeah, that's a really good idea. So remember, we're going to ask you which direction you want the water to come in from. So make sure you keep that in mind. Is the clay easy to mold? Yeah, it's very easy. The clay gets kind of tough to work with if it gets too dry. So what are you doing now? I'm adding rocks for support. You're adding the rocks for the support? Actually, I think I'm going to add sticks first. Be careful breaking the sticks just in case uh, so that they don't poke you. What do you think you're going to do next? Um, I'm going to add the rocks next. In front or behind the sticks? Behind. Are you going to have any clay to hold the rocks down? Yep. Are you going to put the clay on top of the rocks or underneath? Um, I'm going to put it behind the rocks so that it's like, like they're trapped in there. Like they're trapped in there, so you have kind of like double support from the sticks and the 
clay on both sides of the rocks. Mm -hmm. Which direction are you going to pour the water from? This way. So why do you take out the rocks? Because I need more clay first. Oh, okay. Do you think your dam is going to be perfect on the first try? Yes. What if it isn't? Do you think you'll be able to fix it? Yeah, I think so. Do you think beavers get the dam perfect on the first try every single time? Yeah, because they probably have a lot of practice. Yeah, they have a lot of practice, so maybe they... a lot of beavers building it. Yeah, so that's right. A lot of times you see more than one beaver working on a dam at a time. So now you're putting the clay in behind the rocks. Mm -hmm. Are you going to use the leaves at all? Mm -hmm. What are you going to use it for? Decoration. Decoration? Like kind of on the sides? Um, all, all around the leaf, around the rocks. Actually, I'm going to take out some rocks and put a base layer of leaves first. Are you almost finished or what do you still have left? I think I'm ready. All right, so once you get your finishing to touch, then we'll walk over and test it. Are you ready to test your dam? Yeah. Why don't you go ahead and pour some water in? So you can see that the water flowed through to the other side, but does it look like it stopped? Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it stopped. That's really awesome. It looks like the rocks slowed it down and then the clay and the sticks stopped it from flowing out. I think if I add more, it's going to overflow. Can I try it? Yeah, go ahead and try it. Oh yeah, there it is. But even though it was overflowing, was that as fast as when we poured it with no dam? Well, once it broke the barrier, then yeah. Yeah, once you broke the barrier, it kind of just went just as fast as without. So how do you think you would be able to fix this dam if you have more materials? I would make it higher. It needs to be higher, yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so we just did this cool activity about beavers and the fact that they really affect their environment and their habitat when they create their, uh, their dams. Can you think of any other animals that affect their environment? Bears. Bears? How do bears affect their habitat? They eat fish. They, they eat fish? That, yeah, that's very good. And so fish are less likely to go where bears are because they don't want to get eaten, right? Right. So another animal you can think of are bees. Remember our bee lesson? Yeah. Um, what do bees do? They pollinate. Very good, they pollinate. They move pollen from flower to flower and they, um, they make honey, and they do all these things for the environment. And so they are constantly affecting us. What's another animal that really, really affects the environment? You guys might know them because you are them. People. People, very good. Um, people are always, every single day, every single hour of the day, are affecting the environment. What people do is they create homes, they create cities and neighborhoods, and supermarkets and malls, and they make so many things um, that they're just always constantly uh, affecting the environment. And sometimes it's not always good, but most of the time it's really beneficial for us because we need a place to live. And so um, people, really cool thing about people is they also learn from animals. And so we've learned from beavers specifically that we can prevent floods and help regulate the flow of water by creating man-made dams. And so over in Nevada, there's this really cool dam named after one of our presidents. The Hoover Dam. The Hoover Dam, very good. The Hoover Dam is a man-made dam that we created to control the flow of water. And so it's just really cool things like that that make humans awesome. Is that one made out of sticks and clay too? No, this is made out of concrete. It's a little stronger than sticks and clay. It looks really big. It's huge. Have you ever been there? Has anyone ever been there? I have. Okay, you guys did a really cool job with this, with this activity. Your dams were really awesome. And so now, I want you guys to show off what you know. I'm going to ask you some questions. You're going to answer with a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Make sure you keep your answer close to your chest so that no one steals it from you, okay?